how the pitiless storm came about was last, last November, I was speaking at the Radical Independence Conference, which was an extraordinary day, and I was so excited by all the, the wonderful and imaginative and creative and progressive ideas being tossed around. We were out at the interval, and I turned to Chris Dolan, my pal, and I said, Chris, we've got to do something creative to add to this debate. Will you write a one-man show for me? This is a fantastic opportunity for a number of reasons. One, to work with David Heyman. Two, well, perhaps, I should put it all the way around. One, because it's the biggest decision our nation's ever going to have to make. I said, how about a man who's a tribal Labour, sub Labour supporter, he's a left-winger, and he's just about to receive an award in the eve of the referendum when he goes through a crisis of conscience, and maybe, maybe changes his mind. Don't you call the old man in me! Don't you dare! You have no fucking idea! The last thing I'd seen David in was King Lear. And Lear, that whole... Uh, blasted Heath, that, that, that idea of a man going mad is completely part of what the play was, which is why it's called The Pitiless Storm. That's where the title comes from. The Pitiless Storm that, uh, that Lear goes through. For the love of God, tell them. Tell all these mad people inside my head to shut the fuck up. What was really important for us was, I, I, at one point I said to Chris, Chris, this is about the journey of our lives. Most men and women, people growing up in uh, working class, backgrounds in the west of Scotland are tribal Labour supporters. And we've come on an extraordinary journey through about the last, you know, 40, 50 years when we've been betrayed, we've been disappointed, our dreams have never come true. Everything we worked for and fought for is disappearing and everything we've, we've hated and we despise is on the rise. So it was very difficult to get a concept for it. And that, what was brilliant about what Chris did was he said, look, we have to find a character first. And I was walking here the night and I stopped it to send a text and Suddenly this guy was standing in front of me. I mean, he gave me a fright. He was an old guy. And then I realised I was standing in front of a short window. And it was me. It was my reflection. I didn't recognise myself. It's been a wonderfully collaborative uh, journey, the whole thing. First of all, with Davy himself, and then with Davy's son, Young Davy, the three of us working together on it, and just looking at the whole kind of way we can get the story across. This is us exploding. It's exploding one man's life, one moment in Scotland, and how we've got to this moment, and what any one of us do. I'm looking at my union, my party, my brothers and sisters. So it's not just a political polemic. It's about the history of working class people in the west of Scotland, leading up to one of the most wonderful and extraordinary and important decisions we will ever make in our lives. So I hope that we appeal uh, to people of all sides. I hope we confirm the yeses. I hope we put doubt in, the, in, the, in those who wish to vote no's minds. And I hope we swing the don't no's towards the yes. But whatever we do, and we're, having, we're following each performance with a question and answer session, I hope that whatever we do, we will create more discussion, more debate, bring it out into the open, because this is a genuinely very, very exciting time for Scotland. And I can't wait until September the 18th. So welcome to my wee Scotland. With thistles and jagged edges and uncertainties. <laughs> <laughs>